following is a special presentation of TNN Motorsports. When ASA's Traveling Circus rolls into Minneapolis for the St. Fair on Labor Day, you can expect wild rides that bump and bang and spin you round and round. Hard-hitting, hard-charging ringers always invade the starting lineup. Everybody trying to launch themselves in the stratosphere of victory lane. It's Labor Day Monday, and that means it's State Fair time. And at the Minnesota State Fair, that means ASA racing with the Miller 300. It's 81 degrees and 30% chance of rain, so it looks like we're gonna have green flag racing all the way through here at the Miller 300. Hi everybody, I'm Ralph Sheen alongside of my co-driving partner, Jim Trado. They only race here once a year, and Jim, we've got an interesting field here today. 19 times we've raced here with ASA, 12 of those event winners are in the field, and we've got 14 championships spread out amongst this field, but we've got four really strong ringers here as well. It's a one-day show. These teams had very little time, only a one-hour practice session before qualifying. The ringers brought in. It wouldn't be a Minnesota State Fair race without Dick Trickle. He's here this afternoon. Bobby Gill, the 1995 winner, is in the 55 car. We'll get to that story in the broadcast. Also, you have Butch Miller, the three-time ASA champion here, and last year's series champion, Tony Raines, will start at the rear of the field in a team car to Dick Trickle. This is a race that takes veteran experience to find your way to victory lane, and arguably two of the best short trackers in the business with a ton of veteran experience make up our front row. Here's Dave Burns with their story. Bob Sinecker is the most recent winner on the ASA circuit. He won last week at Milwaukee. It was his first victory of 1997, the first for Ford, and he qualifies on the outside pole today, went out under cloudy conditions, and has a very quick Ford Thunderbird. Mike Eddy is the pole sitter. He hasn't had a lot to smile about in 1997, but he's changed that around today, and Mike told me earlier that he was surprised how fast the car was coming off the truck. That's a good thing because you only get an hour of practice here at the Minnesota State Fair. Mike, any idea why your car was so good right off the truck today? Well, we've been coming here for 20 years. Uh, you know, I kind of got a good idea what it takes here to to go around here fast. It, but uh, the race changes, it gets slippery, so changes are going to have to be made during the race. And what a way to celebrate Mike Eddy's 400th ASA start. It certainly is a place here at Minnesota for veterans. Ralph? Thank you, Dave. Let's take a look at the point standings. After 14 of the 20 races, you see that Gary St. Amon trails Kevin Swinski by 200 points, but he's not out of this yet, Jim. Not at all. He's gained 21 points in just one event, and if he has good finishes and Swinski finds any problems, which is yet to happen this season, it could tighten up even more as we head into the stretch run of the season. Rick Beebe's in third in points. He made a strong run. Now he's settled into third in points. Hansen is resurging, as is Dave Sensiba, still in search of his first win. And the back half of that top... 10, and you can see what the win at Milwaukee did for Bob Seneca put him in the top 10. Back in the top 10 for only the third time this season after 14 events. Here's an interesting note, though. Steve Carlson, sixth in points right now, is leading the rookie standings. Tim Sauter is ninth in points. He's 142 points back, but Sauter has a different ride coming into this event. He was released earlier this week from the 55 car, so we'll see how that plays out in the rookie battle, the race within the race. Time to put a little rumble into your Labor Day. Let's go to Dave Burns to start him up. I'm standing by with Phil Sukerman, who is the manager of Top Value Liquor. They are a distributor for Miller Brewing Company. And Phil, today you've got the best job in the world. Go ahead, get us started. All right, gentlemen, it's Miller time. Let's boogie start those engines. <laughs> weekend of summer. It's Labor Day Monday. What a great way to finish it off. Little ASA racing coming your way on TNN. The AC Delco Challenge Series on TNN is brought to you in part by your select GM Goodrich Service Plus dealers. The plus means better. It's the Minnesota State Fair Speedway, and the Miller 300 is why we're here. They only race on this beautiful half mile once a year, and the American Speed Association is a sanctioning body privileged to do it. Let's show you the grid for today's Miller 300. Boy, what an exciting front row. 
Mike Eddy, the pole winner, 89.5 miles an hour, the seven-time champ looking for his first win in 97. Bob Seneker got victory number 83 last week in Milwaukee. Scott Hansen found rookie, the uh, victory lane in his rookie season in 1989. He'll start third. Outside of him will be leading rookie contender Steve Carlson. Leader in rookie points, it'll be his fifth start here at the Minnesota State Fairgrounds. Back to row number three, we find Gary St. Amon, who is second place in the points with three wins in 97. Rick Beebe, he's third in points, has one win in Grand Rapids at Berlin. Starting seventh and eighth will be two of those ringers, Bobby Gill and a Pontiac, and the 1995 event winner will be in the Leo Motorsports number 55. Dick Trickle has run each and every of the 19 previous events as a four-time winner here. He'll start outside row four. Now let's show you those two cars. That's Trickle in the Miller Lite number 99. Looks a lot like Rusty Wallace's car. And the 55 was the car that Tim Sauter had been driving all season. We'll finish that story off for you a little later. Bobby Gill behind the wheel of the 55. On to row number five is where you find the series points leader with three wins. That's Kevin Sawinski, the Tecumseh number one. And Mike Miller, the defending race winner of this event, has two wins in 97. Kevin Nudelman with his career best start in eight ASA events and his career starts 11th. Outside of him coming off a fifth place finish at Milwaukee, we find Detroit, Michigan's Harold Fair. Row number seven has one of the ringers in it. That would be Butch Miller, the three-time champion of this series. He has two wins in this event. And Junior Hanley, one of the greatest ever out of Canada. He was third in his only other start here in this event. Now let's show you Butch's car so you know which one he is in. He's in the Justice Brothers number two, Jim Daly's famous number two. Bobby Gill won exactly. this race last year behind the wheel of this car. In the next row, we find Brad Loney, one DNF and 58 ASA starts. Outside of him, Joe Nott of Spring Lake, Michigan, working without a crew chief. His crew chief, Chris Bradley, and the team separated earlier this week. One of a couple of Minnesota natives in this one is Paul Payne out of Mound, Minnesota, and his Pontiac. And Steve Holzhausen out of Bangor, Wisconsin, competed in the very first race here back in 1978. In the next row, we find Jack Lennon is trying to better or match his sixth place finish at Jennerstown early this year, and Brandon Sperling coming off of three straight eighth place finishes. Dave Sensima is using his third worst qualifying effort so far in 97. We'll start 21st today. And Mike Garvey has two wins. He's trying to forget about August, trying to turn things over here in September. The driver starting 23rd is the runner-up a year ago. Ted Smokes that finished second to Mike Miller in this event. And Mike Colfer earned a career-best 10th place finish one week ago, so that team's riding a high wave. After a weekend off, skipping Milwaukee, Tom Jones back behind the wheel. And with over 50 sprint car victories, Billy Turner trying to get a handle on ASA Racing. Next, we find Canadian veteran Alec Pinson on the driver fourth in the Pat Shaw Memorial Rookie of the Year standings, Doug Mayer in the car number 11. Sammy Pegram has been spending a lot of time behind the wheel of the number 92, starting 29th today. However, will be Carol Adamy and SCCA Road Racing star Chuck Hemmingson out of Des Moines will roll off 30th. We find Rockford Speedway champion Ricky Bilderback in his fourth ASA start. Outside of him, Justin Dirks, the 17-year-old, who's made three starts in the last five ASA races. Tim Sauter was released from the driving duties of the number 55 earlier this week. We'll have more on that story for you. He will start behind the wheel of the 60 on the last row. And one of the last ringers in the field, Tony Raines in the green, number nine, the four that you see right there. The 1996 champion starts last, and Dave, that's not where he was hoping to be. Not at all. They had problems in qualifying. They lost a cylinder, so they came and they changed all six spark plugs, adjusted the carburetor, checked the timing, and then crew chief Toby Noodleman drove the car slowly around the track with brakes and gas pedal to the floor. They think the motor is solid for 300 laps. If it is, look for Tony Raines to come up towards the front here quickly. 300 laps at the Minnesota State Fair the only time this racetrack is used all year, and we get to do 300 laps with ASA as we go green. Smoothly through turns one and two, Mike Eddy leads him into three, and here comes Scott Hansen and Kenny Schrader's number 52 to the inside. Challenging for the lead as we come to the close of lap number one. One driver drifting wide. Mike that Miller. would be Mike Miller, who won this race last year, and Chuck Hemmingson back on pit road in the 95 car. Give the lead of this lap to Scott Hansen. And he runs in second. Steve Carlson coming up to challenge him now. Bob Seneca in fourth. Behind them is Rick Beebe, Gary St. Amon, and here comes Dick Trickle. Doug Mayer as well down pit road in the no touch Menards number 11. There's your 
top four. That's Scott Hansen, the white 52. Second place on the outside, the black number 88, the Goodwrench sponsored car of Mike Eddy. Doug Mayer has come into pit lane with a flat white front tire. This track, Ralph, is very porous. It's a smooth racetrack, but the drivers and crews admit it eats up tires because it is such a porous surface. High in the United States here, a lot of winter, a lot of freeze bumps, that kind of thing. Getting the track ready for one time a year does cause problems for these teams used to running on smoother surfaces. Tremendous battle for second place. Just behind Hanson, our leader. There it is, Eddie in the 88, Carlson in the 87, the white car, and Bob Seneker looking for career victory 80. Four, trying to match the car number. Looking through the history books in the 19 previous races, the pole winner has won seven times. Looking at how many laps the pole winner has led, it's usually the first 80 or 90 laps for Scott Hansen to wrestle it away on the third circuit from, from Mike Eddy. Could be a telling sign of how hungry both of these drivers who are winless this season are for victory lane. Doug Mayer has returned to the racetrack. Junior Hanley with problems on the front straightaway. He is very slow, pulling off, and we've got a side-by-side -side battle for eight. That's Kevin Sawinski, the points leader, the black Tecumseh number one, and chasing him in the Miller Lite number 99, Dick Trickle. Kevin Noodleman in the 21, the Sitco car, the orange and purple number 21, running behind Trickle. 9th and 10th, those drivers start at 9th, 10th, and 11th. We see Trickle drifting up here. He's not comfortable in this car. Again, he raced Saturday and Sunday, flew in late last night. Got only the hour practice session, as did the other ASA teams, but it's his first and only time this season in an ASA car. They got the race car painted in time for Dick, but they didn't get the driver's uniform done in time. He had to borrow a Miller Lite racing uniform off of one of Rusty Wallace's crew members. Sean Parker, who competes in the Legend Series, donated the, the driver's suit so Dick could come racing. Yellow flag is out because of Junior Hanley. We told you he was slow in the front straightaway. He did not make it all the way around the racetrack, so Roger Slack has thrown the first yellow of the day. Well, we'll take a quick break. Let Trado run down, grab something that's on a stick, and we'll be back with more from Minnesota right after this. Well, I was not kidding about all the things you can find on a stick. You see, my broadcast partner is a that food is, on a yeah. stick gourmet. Is this the Belgian waffle on a stick? And there is the fair favorite, pork chop on a stick. There's a 35 minute wait in line to get pork chop on a stick here. Some of the other things we found that you can actually get on a stick here at the Minnesota State Gator and Ostrich on a stick. And one thing not on the list is a chocolate covered, covered cheesecake on a stick that I happen to witness. I didn't eat it, but I was mighty tempted, but I had too much other stuff on a stick in me already. What's a bomb pop? Oh, that's one of those uh, frozen deals, kind of like, uh, you know, it's got uh. different colors and it turns your tongue red first, then white, then blue by the time you're done with it. Uh-huh. Your favorite thing on a stick? I'm still a corn dog fanatic at a fair. I got to have corn dogs at the fair. Here, there's too many options on a stick and I ran out of time. I was looking for walleye on a stick. I found it, but I was too full. Green flag on a stick. <laughs> Scott Hansen leads him down the backstretch again. Here comes Mike Miller, the red and white number 18 in the AFC 1000. He won this race last year, and we've got a fight for the lead. Mike Eddy will get credited with that lap. Scott Hansen, the white 52 on the outside, the white 87 bumping and banging his way past to Steve Carlson. Here comes a bluebird, Bob Seneca up the inside as well in the 84 car. That's a fight for third. Rick Beebe, third in the points. Oh, Doug Mayer around in the Menards, no touch, number 11. The caution flag is out. We thought he may have got it right. He had a flat right front tire and came down pit line, so he's at the rear of the field. But spun in turn number two, bringing out the second caution. Doug Mayer slows. There again, the experienced teams starting up front, staying clean and clear. Doug Mayer's rookie team had a flat right front tire. We see some of the debris that kicked up on the front fender of that all-glass aquarium no-touch Monte Carlo. And as he comes by, everything is fine and square, but it looks like he may have flat spotted those tires. And Ralph, they're saying tires are so critical here. It's a very good compound for this porous surface, but it's a matter of tire wear. Left rear tires have worn through here, and there's also been some blistering problems with the right front tires. So 
It's interesting to see. We see the damage there on Doug Mayer's fender. It looks like body damage only on the 11 car. That was from, uh, may have been from an altercation with another car. It looks like a lot of exterior black on that car, but. There was also a report, Jim, from the ASA officials that there might be a little fluid on the racetrack, and I'm wondering if some of that is coming off of uh, maybe a busted radiator. We see Tom Jones on pit road. Junior Hanley is also down there, and there goes Alec Pinsano. Let's check in with Dave Burns on the story from the pits. And Junior Hanley didn't have much time at all today to practice or qualify, and he didn't have much time to race either. Junior, what happened to your car? I guess a transmission broke because a uh, dry shaft moves around, but the when you put it in gear, nothing happened, so it broke the transmission. There were some reports of fluid on the track. Would you have dropped any, perhaps, in that uh, usually doesn't come out of the transmission? Uh, nothing come out of it, really, and uh, just a broke a gear inside, I guess, and uh, that was it. Okay, the Team Kendall Chevrolet is out for the day. Doug Mayer did have that right front tire down, as Jim mentioned. The 79 car of Mike Kofer, his transponder was out when the race got going. He had to come in and get a new one put on, and crew chief Donnie Schrock said it didn't uh, upset his driver at all, so Kofer's good to go. And Chuck Hemmingson has an electrical problem. They're going underneath the hood. Chuck is still, and actually just got off of pit lane. There is definitely fluid on the racetrack, and we think it's coming from Tom Jones's number zero. And now he got a motor from Alec Pinsano for this race, and Tom has had nothing but motor problems all season long. And it looks like the motor from Alec might not have been a whole lot better, Jim. A lot of plumbing and a lot of different geometry, depending on the engine builder. There are different mountings for the fuel pump, the fuel, uh, the oil pump, that kind of thing. So maybe the whole changeover, they may not have gotten everything tight under the engine. To the crew working on the Minnesota State Fair Half Mile. It's Labor Day. We're racing with ASA. Stay with us. They only race here once a year right now, but this is a racetrack that was used quite a bit over the years. In fact, our first race was here back in 1906. In fact, the Minnesota State Fairgrounds is the first state fair to ever have held a race. I would guess that would be an auto race because horse racing does date back prior to that, but a purpose-built racetrack for horse racing and uh, auto racing certainly has a long history here. And they ran some super modified shows here. They've run a number of different events. The American Speed Association has sanctioned events here since 1978. Dick Trickle has won four of those. Mike Eddy has won two. Bob Seneca has won two. Scott Hansen, who had the lead earlier, has one race win here. Interestingly enough, seven drivers have won from the pole position here. That does not include Mike Eddy's two wins or Bob Seneca's two wins or Scott Hansen's win here in 89. He started third that year. Commercial transportation for this telecast has been provided by Ryder, the official transportation company for Opryland. You can see the huge crowd they get here for this ASA race, and it's a, it surprised me to see the, this fantastic facility, Jim, and the huge crowd that ASA draws every time we come here. It amazes me that they only do race here once a year. And this is a 10-day or 11-day fair, this being the final day of the fair. A lot of folks from around the country come to this fair. It's the second largest, I'm told, in the entire country to Texas as far as a state fair is concerned. 18,000 seats are filled today with avid race fans. You'll go, I'd say one in three people have a racing shirt of a different design or different favorite driver. There are serious racing fans up here in Minnesota. Let's check in with Dave Burns. Ralph, one of the problems in ASA has long been small pit lane, a small pit lane to work with. In other words, you don't have much room to get your car in and out. Today, Kevin Sawinski has chosen at the head of the pack, but right behind him is Billy Turner, one of the cars that traditionally is off the lead lap by the time they make their first pit, uh, pit stop. The reason they're doing this now, they're letting cars like Turner come up here so that when the lead cars do come in for the first time, they all pit and there's this space because Turner has to wait a lap before he can come in. Right behind him then is Gary St. Amant and Scott Hansen, who are also two very quick cars, usually on the lead lap. As you work your way back, Alec Pinsano, Doug Mayer, they're all distributed through here so that there can be some space for the leaders when they all pit for the very first time. And that can be a big key. We saw some problems earlier this season. In fact, at Kakan, I believe it was, where Scott Hansen and Dave Sensba got together. Yeah, that was a couple of altercations. Scott Hansen was one of the drivers to suggest and get ASA to go along with the idea of teams that traditionally don't run in the top 15, top 20. Why don't we put them in between the guys that are running traditionally top 5, top 10? And that's certainly what, uh, what the case is today. This is the first time they've tried that here in ASA. Billy Turner drives the number 58 car. There's quite a shoe behind the wheel of a 800 horsepower sprint car. There he is behind the wheel of the number 58 in the black with the red trim. Billy's first season was a year ago, making the transition. Had Mike Getty and Howe Racing Enterprises help him greatly with his Santa Fe Pontiac. And as he has the Get Well Dock sticker on that side panel, 
He's got a lot of support with him. Uh, each and every race, Jimmy Price and the guys have come up from Georgia. They help him out. And uh, he certainly has uh, better days ahead. He's struggling right now. He's got a Howe chassis that's working good for him. He's got a number of drivers helping him feel these ASA cars out, this being his second full season. He had a 25th place finish here a year ago, trying to better that today. And he's got a great pit spot. He stays on that lead lap and runs with the leaders all day. We may see some surprising runs out of uh, Billy yet today. There's Tony Raines, number nine. And he is already up to 22nd. Remember, he started 34th, so maybe whatever the engine problems were, they seem to have them fixed for now, at least, Jim, and he's on his way up. Consider this. They have one practice session, and Toby Noodleman and Rick Scalzo's team brought three race cars here. Andy Burgess was one of four teams not to make the show. Along with Dick Trickle and Tony Raines, that team was very busy and thinned out. Raines had brought in some of the guys that helped him a year ago win the ASA championship. But really, it comes down to Toby Noodleman's preparation. He's working directly with Tony Raines, and it, indeed, it looks like they have that engine miss. It sounded like a miss during qualifying figured out. Dave Sensaba in the number six, Paul Payne in the yellow and green number 47. And we have the lights off on the AC Dunco Pontiac Pace Car. Firebird about set to pull down as Dick Trickle gets set to jump back into the throttle on the number 99. Kevin Sawinski runs in eighth. Dick Trickle is ninth. Noodleman runs in tenth. The 21 car having a good run today. Harold Fair 11th. Mike Miller, the winner here a year ago in 12th. 13th is Brad Loney. 14th, Joe Knott. As we keep an eye on the leaders, 15th is the two car of Butch Miller, followed by Steve Holtzhausen, Mike Garvey, Paul Payne, and that Dave Sensiba's West Michigan Auto Auction Chevrolet, or Pontiac, excuse me. We mentioned Sensiba qualified 21st. He's not up with the leaders. He may be as fast as these guys, but this track can become a one-groove racetrack. So qualifying was so critical for these guys to get up front and stay there. Lab traffic, Tom Jones moving to the inside in the zero. He's the one we think brought out the yellow flag due to the liquid problem. They seem to have that fixed, and he's back out on the racetrack. Tom is now 12 laps down to the leaders here. This is the ninth different time in 20 events here at the Minnesota State Fair that Mike Eddy has led. He led eight races, nine races, excuse me, for uh, 689 laps, adding to that total this weekend. He mentioned in the beginning, I won the poll because I'm experienced here. These teams had to get up at four in the morning to get in line to get the haulers in by six, unloaded, practiced by nine, and then qualifying, followed up by the race this afternoon. Harold Fair diving inside of Kevin Noodleman. This is a fight for 10th position. Noodleman in the Sitco orange and purple number 21. Harold Fair in the AC Delco Car Quest number 81, the white car on the bottom. And Mike Miller, the red and white number 18, the driver that won this race last year, giving chase as well. So a three car fight to get into the top 10. Down into turn number one, Harold Fair out of Detroit, Michigan takes the 10th position. Miller and Noodleman now scrap for 11th. Give it to Mike Miller. This is only Kevin Noodleman's eighth career ASA start. He bought a brand new Rander car chassis for this season. He now loses a spot to this man, the AFC 1000. Anti-friction compound machine of Mike Miller out of Marietta, Georgia. And Jim, I gotta believe he could be a strong contender for Rookie of the Year honors next year if he comes back to do that. He is looking to do that as well as a number of other teams that are finalizing their plans for 1998. We'll continue to update those teams throughout the year. We know the Huff brothers and Tim Taylor have curtailed their efforts, so Kurt Huff may be a contender as well as Tim Taylor competed at five events early this year. They can complete up to eight races in a given season before declaring rookie status in ASA. Mike Miller trying to get inside of Harold Fair, and he also has to deal with the lap car of Jones. Look at him stop on the gas and split the two of them. Mike Miller moved to the Wisconsin Dells area to race with his buddy Dick Trickle. 
Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin Dells areas where Mike lived for a number of years. Then he moved up here to Minneapolis area. He won this event in 1981 at the first weekend of the fair. The second weekend of the fair, he finished second at Butch Lindley. So Mike has a lot of laps here and has certainly gathered a lot of fans back here to the Minnesota State Fairgrounds to cheer on a driver that used to call this his hometown. Noodleman trying to catch up now. And just behind Noodleman, you see the 48 car, the red car of Joe Knott. Now, Joe Knott here without a crew chief. Chris Bradley and Joe Knott and his father, Ron Knott, have mutually agreed to part ways this week. And that was a shocking development in the ASA community. Well, Chris Bradley had certainly uh, done well with jo Johnny Benson Jr. winning the 1993 championship. Working with Glenn Allen Jr. who finished top five in points the two years he was with Glenn. He then moved on to the Knott Engineering team. And this team has really come together. But this year, they're missing a little bit. They have four 13-point finishes. And that's about where Joe's been running on an average. Last year, he took up, picked up his first win at Lancaster Speed but has not found that success in 1997. The team then making the decision, we may need to shake things up a little bit to improve our running for the end of the year. Noodleman is in 12th, Nod is in 13th, and Butch Miller is in the Justice Brothers number two. He runs in 14th, charging his way to the front. And here comes Nod now to the outside of Noodleman as they fight it out for 12th. Dave, you've got more on this? Well, so who's in charge today of the 48 car, you might wonder. I asked Ron Nod, who is the team owner, and Ron said, well, I am, and Peter Cazzolini, is and Joe is and tire specialist Kevin Burnett. We're all working as a group to make the decisions today on the red Ford for Joe Knott. And they've got a five car battle for 12. Tony Raines now joins this mess in the green Ford number nine and Steve Holzhausen in the black number five, the house lubricator number five coming up from the backside. And look at Raines tagging right onto the backside of Butch Miller as the two champions of this division charge their way to the front. Butch won the series title in 94. Raines wrapping up his crown one season ago. First time ever in a green car for Tony Raines. I'd say you might want to add some green to the other cars he runs. He's really cutting his way through the field. Engine problems not a concern right now for Tony Raines. He's got one ASA title. Butch Miller chasing him has three. Great to see these two guys back on the series. This is Rain's third start of the year. Recall he won a Jennerstown Speedway, a track that he raced locally for three or four seasons for Ernie Rosselli. He finally got to wear Monty Lasky's white hat this past uh, spring. Looking forward to returning to that racetrack, but he runs ASA when he can. He has other commitments, and Butch Miller, when he comes back, he hasn't been back to the ASA since Brainerd of 1995, but when he comes back, he certainly makes his presence known. He ran a Kakana early this year and finished eighth after a great run. We'll see how he does today. After starting 21st, Dave Sensaba, the red and white number six, is up to about 16th position just behind Noodleman there, Sensaba. He's still looking for his first ASA win. He's got Loney and Payne behind him and a host of cars in front of him. So maybe Sensaba still searching for that first win. Nothing has changed up front. That's why we're showing you the battles behind. This Deep in the field, great racing today. It's about one half lap behind the leaders. Mike Eddie, the middle of the back stretch as this pack heads to the finish, start finish line. Kevin Noodleman, a very experienced driver at Lacrosse Fairground Speedway, a flat, big five ace mile. We visited back in July. He, along with the rest of the drivers, only competing here once a season. And Noodleman certainly has impressed the locals here anyway. He's got a lot of friends and fans. His brother is Toby Noodleman, the crew chief for Steve Holtzhausen for quite a few years, and now crew chiefing today for Tony Raines and overseeing the Dick Trickle efforts. Brad Loney, the Bun Saber 33 in the middle of this in the back. As Noodleman and Holtzhausen continue to fight it out. Oh, look at Noodleman right up behind him. The Ford and the number five and a Pontiac number 21. When Steve Holzhausen was out of ASA racing for a short time, he raced weekly against Kevin Noodleman and actually ran a team car to Kevin when it was a companion event when the ASA series visited across Fairground Speedway earlier this year. Alec Pinson on that black 93, the lap car trying to get out of the way. The lead 2-0. Mike Eddy, the black 88, continues the lead. Steve Carlson here at the Miller 300. It's Labor Day Monday. We hope you're enjoying the ASA series. Getty and that Goodrand Service Plus number 88 has pretty much dominated the early stages of this one. But you know, Jim, you can't say that that's the way it's going to finish. As we take a quick look back here at this fight going on between Kevin Sawinski in the number one car and Scott Hansen in the 52. That is 
uh, fight back in uh, seventh and eighth position. It's a good one. Zawinski on the inside and the Tecumseh Pontiac. Interesting news and great news for that. LaFaber Racing Team, they've signed Tecumseh Motorsports for the remainder of 1997. Right now, he's not in a great position because he's behind the lap car of Alec Pinsano. Give the seventh spot to Hanson for now, but this team is certainly riding high after debuting the Tecumseh Motorsports colors one week ago. The uh, Tecumseh folks had about 1,000 people at the Milwaukee Mile last week. This weekend, a great turnout again for Sawinski fans, and the Tecumseh sponsorship lays on that car. The decals will stay on through the remainder of this season, and they're looking forward to the future beyond that as well. Seneca is just in front of them in sixth. BB just behind them in ninth. Dave? Ralph, Mike Chaffee, the crew chief for Kevin Sawinski's number one, said we've never had a good setup at Minnesota, so we were really hoping to run well at Milwaukee because people say a Milwaukee setup works well here. Well, they ran pretty bad for their standards, so they came here with nothing. They worked all week to find a setup for Kevin Sawinski, and they did it. He's running well. Now, the Milwaukee setup is pretty much what Scott Hansen told me he was going to run on his car as well, the 52. And Sawinski had a ninth place finish here a year ago. His father, John, who's also his spotter, had said to me earlier today, we're about a half second off in practice. We're trying to find it. But Kevin did not have a good run here a year ago, so I wouldn't think this is one of his favorite tracks. As this battle rages on, Kevin Noodleman very slow on the front straightaway, and what a tough break for the driver of the Sitco number 21. Jim, he looked pretty good early on, and this youngster now looks to be out of it. Running in the 10th position when it looks like the motor might have given way, he came down the front straightaway extremely slow. He may have been out of off, off the uh, gas pedal and turned the power off already, but you see him slowly down the back straightaway. The second time we've seen this today, Junior Hanley brought out a caution earlier today. That's right. We'll have to see if this uh, happens again. Mike Garvey in the eight car struggling here this afternoon. He was very, very loose in qualifying, and it looks like the eight car is still that way here today. Carol Adams brought, brought his Chevrolet down pit lane. And we're going to see a yellow from Roger Slack because Noodleman did not make it to pit road either. As you said, Carol Adamy on pit road in the Dorothy Lynch University of Nebraska, number 92. And Noodleman's Pontiac comes to rest. The ignition is what we're hearing is the problem on the 21. He That's will a whole lower the window net to let them know that he is okay. The ignition box is a whole lot cheaper than replacing a motor in these in these cars. You're looking at what, twenty, twenty-two thousand dollars per motor for the AC Duckle Challenge Series machine. Strictly V6 engines putting out about 500 horsepower. There's Mike Eddy. Now we talked about Mike Eddy and him dominating the early stages of this one. There's five other races this year, Jim, where Mike Eddy dominated throughout the race, even into the closing stages, and it was snatched out from under him. Earlier this year at Jennerstown. Tri-City, his home racetrack in Michigan, Berlin and Grand Rapids, Michigan, both races there, and last week in Milwaukee, Mike looked to have the most dominating car for quite a while and lost again due to uh, valve problems last week. So seeing him out front now does not mean that this one is over by any stretch of imagination. And the drivers playing the early pit stop strategy are now down pit lane, including Bobby Gill, and here's the 87 car of Steve Carlson. Scott Hansen. Harold Fair, Tony Raines, Rick Beebe, Bob Seneker, Ted Smokestad, Paul Payne, Brad Loney, Steve Holzhausen, Mike Kofer, Joe Nunn, Mike Miller, Dave Sensaba, and Tim Sauter all pitted. Now Mike Eddy stayed out. So did Gary St. Amon. Steve Carlson, the first car off pit lane. Following him back on the racetrack will be Kevin Sawinski, Bobby Gill, Scott Hansen, Tony Raines, and Rick Beebe. Dick Trickle as well stayed out on the racetrack. The Miller 300 is underway. The Miller 300 is brought to you in part by Aqua Fresh Whitening. Aqua Fresh Whitening is safe to use every day for dazzling whiter teeth. Mike Eddy and Gary St. Amand in the wins orange and black number seven fighting for the lead now st amont second in the point standings entering the picture is dick trickle the race fans will be on their feet if trickle gets to the point here Started in the eighth position he's now up to third yes a couple of guys have pitted but anytime trickle gets close to the lead the fans get on the edge of their seat and then stand up and don't think dick trickle is just here to make a guest appearance 
He is here to win. I talked to Miller PR man Tom Roberts, who handles Rusty Wallace's account. He flew up here with Dick Trickle after Darlington. He said, last night when we got on the helicopter, then on the plane, Dick already had his race face on. He knows how important it is to the fans here for him to run well, and he also wants to add to that four-race win total here at the Minnesota State Fairgrounds. A ton of Trickle fans show up for this race. If you didn't hear already, Dick Trickle has run each and every the 19 races run here under the ASA sanction dating back to 1978. And the fans continue to support Trickle wherever he may run. He wouldn't miss it. And old number 99 going at it. If you've just gotten into stock car racing and you're surprised to see Dick Trickle in number 99, for most folks who have been following stock car racing for years, that's the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> Over 1,200 short track features running the 99 car. He was also the uh, Super America teammate to Tom Reffner and Johnny Bogman. They have all competed here under the ASA sanctioning. Of course, Great Tom history. Reffner, the father of Brian Reffner, a former series champion here on the ASA series, now running in the Craftsman Truck Division. And here's three cars making their way back up to the front. Here comes Scott Hansen in the 52, Tony Raines in the number 99, and Bobby Gill in the number 55. Kevin Sawinski just in front of them in the number one. Sawinski's in sixth already, following Steve Carlson. So Carlson, the first of the drivers to make pit stops and run back through the field. Then we see Sawinski here trying to hold off Scott Hansen in the AFCO Racing Products, number 52. Hansen a little bit wide through that turn, and look at Reigns closing up. Remember, Tony Reigns started dead last in that number nine. And this is a backup car to what Dick Trickle is driving. It's the car Joe Shear drove earlier this season at Hawkeye Downs. They had a vibration problem there. They've got the motor problem fixed here today in the Articat Ford number nine. You see the other nine is taped over. That would be a backup car for Trickle if he needed it. The Ford on the inside, the Chevy on the outside, and Reigns making his way around, trying to get in front of Scott Hansen. Tony Raines, of course, picking up the first ever win for Dodge on the Craftsman Truck Tour earlier this year at I-70 Speedway, which is the next stop for the AC Delco Challenge Series. And Trickle with a puff of smoke to the inside, gets around Gary St. Amant for second. Gary did everything he could to try to hold him off. He crossed it up off of turn number two. He saw the car sashay a bit back and forth. He regathered, but now Trickle is within two car lengths of the race leader. Tony Raines, Kevin Sawinski still battling it out a little bit deeper back. They're working up onto the backside of Brandon Sperling in the 51 who stayed out. Sperling had problems in qualifying. They got that sorted out, and he's running pretty good here in the back half of this one. Sawinski on the outside. Hansen on the inside. Will they touch? No, but boy, did they get close coming out of three and four. And Hansen had the outside position just three laps ago and thought, well, maybe I'll try the inside. And Sawinski pushed up a bit in turn one. It took nearly a lap to complete that pass. Bobby Gill in that blue and white number 55 won this race last year or two years ago. And he's trying to do it again. One of the ringers here today. He stepped right back into it. He was one of the top 10 guys in practice speeds, and he qualified seventh for the race. He'll be in this Leo Motorsports Pontiac for this race and the next event, which is I-70 Speedway in two weeks. How much fun is this going to be to watch Dick Trickle and Mike Eddy go at it? The car that pitted and came out first is Steve Carlson, the Trop Arctic. Clean burn Pontiac now chasing down the leaders with fresh right side tires. The white 87 of Carlson now closing in on the lead pair. Boy, Carlson down onto the apron. Howie let out, spinning the wrenches, the garage area guru when it comes to ASA racing for the 87. With 77 laps on all four of those Goodyear Eagles, the two leaders of Eddie and the 99 of Trickle have to worry about Carlson. With fresh right side tires, he pitted on lap 62, and he's coming forward as is Tony Raines. Who started dead last in this field of 34. He is up to fourth and challenging. Trickle inside of Eddie. Listen to the crowd roaring. Trickle to the lead of the Miller 300. Carlson goes by, Reigns goes by, Eddie all the way back to fourth, and I'm, Jim, I see a puff of smoke out of Trickle's car as he goes through one and two. That's twice now that I've seen that. I'm not sure where it's coming from, 
if it's just when he lifts off the accelerator and gets back into the throttle. But there's definitely a puff of smoke off the back of the 99. For Dick Trickle fans, I hope he's just kicking up some dust on this old racetrack. But that's not dust, Jim. It, it's smoke of some kind, and I'm not sure what, if it's just some oil dripping or what. Now, last year, Dick Trickle started ninth. He got up to second place by lap 60, but then retired. And we saw the smoke appear again there. See? When he coasts in the corner, it does not appear to be brake smoke. There it, it comes is. out of the right side of the center of the car. Carlson right behind him. He can see it now. If it's oil leaking, we might get a report out of Carlson's crew because he might see it on the windshield of the 87. And I'm, I'm brains is flying in that line car. Carlson staying behind the 99 of Trickle for now. If it is oil developing, that obviously makes it a very slick surface for the racing tires. They're ungrouped tires. They've got to have a clean, flat, dry surface to adhere to the racetrack. If that oil is being put down by Trickle, Carlson doesn't want to take a chance. It doesn't look like the smoke is increasing, though. Three or four laps ago, it was a big puff coming off the turn. You saw Trickle sliding up off of turn four. Good short track racing here today at the Minnesota State Fair. Trickle has led the last four laps of this event, has yet to pit. Steve Carlson and the nine of Tony Raines have both pitted, have both fresh right side tires, and that's the battle of the top three. And a good fight for seventh, Brandon Sperling in the white 51, Bobby Gill in the 55 on the inside. The truck air transfer 51 of Brandon Sperling. He struggled in qualifying earlier today, Jim, and I thought he was going to be done, but he apparently not. He had some problems early under green as well in that white 51 car. Trickle still holding on to the lead. How fast is Tony Raines? He went from dead last to the lead, and he's taken the second in the lead spots from the outside. 85 laps into it, that pit stop made all the difference. Lisa Smokestad doing the tires and sizing the tires for the nine of Tony Raines. He also has his tire specialist from a year ago, Mike Hoskins, helping him in this piecemeal crew. A majority of those two, two crew members were also with Tony Raines when he won the race at Jennerstown earlier this year. Tony Raines' crew cheering him on as they now hold the lead for the Miller 300. Tony Raines leads Steve Carlson. Scott Hansen up to third. Dick Trickle runs in fourth here at the Minnesota State Fair. We're back to the Miller 300 coming to you today on this Labor Day Monday from the Minnesota State Fairgrounds. The St. Paul half of the Twin Cities. Tony Range, you saw the number nine. He is your leader. And look at this fight going on back here. Mike Eddy leads the pack in the 88. And then it's Gary Sinemont, Brandon Sperling, Bobby Gill in the 55. Noodleman in the 21 is laps down. And the one car of Kevin Sawinski in the 48 of Joe Knott. Wow, what a pack that is. All of these cars have pitted with the exception of Mike Eddy and Dick Trickle. Those two cars now trying to hang on to the top 10 as the, tire, the cars with fresh right side rubber with just 40 laps on them have made their way to the front. Brandon Sperling in the 51 car had problems early. He pitted on lap number 10, Ralph, but he's maintained top 10 position since. It's been an up and down day for the driver of the truck air transfer machine, Dave. It's been that kind of a day, and it's a victory right now for them because their day started bad. They only get an hour of practice. Brandon took the car out of the track. It did not fire. He switched ignition boxes. They checked the plugs. John Boskin went underneath the hood. Then they changed the battery. Brandon got out of the car, said forget it. By the time practice was over, they had the valve covers off, had checked the valve train and the distributor, rebuilt the whole thing, had no practice laps, went out, qualified the car, changed the setup a little bit, and now he's running as well as he has all day long. One of the great young talent on the AC Delco Challenge Series Tour is Brandon Sperling, the native of Southern California, now calls Mooresville. That's it, Mooresville, North Carolina home. Trickle, Dick the trickle pits. down pit road. Now, is this a problem or is this a scheduled pit stop? Has the smoke gotten too bad? Has he figured out that something is wrong or is this a scheduled stop? Dick Trickle brings the Miller Light 99 down pit road as this fight continues out on the racetrack. Under green, Trickle has made up two laps. I've seen it done. Trickle has made up up to two laps here at the Minnesota State Fairgrounds to run well in these events. Unfortunately, under green here this early in the race, it'll be real hard for that team to make the laps up. Look at this, almost three wide. And there is Trickle's car. 
Joe Knott inside of Kevin Sawinski, back to Knott. And the, and the way things are moving around Trickle's car, Jim, it does not look good. Danny Stillman looking in the cockpit, talking to the driver, Dick Trickle of Iron Station, North Carolina. The window net stays up on the car, but now the hood pins will come off and the hood will be raised on the Miller Lite Ford. Meanwhile, out on the racetrack, they have shut the motor, we're told, on Trickle's car. Mike Eddy holds on to fourth. St. Amant would be fifth. And look at Gill going at it with Sperling. Bobby Gill in the 55, the white and blue with the orange numeral 55, banging with the white 51. Joe Knott coming up with Sawinski. Boy, Knott and Sawinski having some great side-by-side -side racing here today. They're running eighth and ninth. And Joe Knott came out five positions worse than Kevin Sawinski on the pit exchange, so he has advanced up to challenge and now past Sawinski, the point leader. 200-point bulge behind this battle is Sawinski's number one, but Bobby Gill's had a great run. This is his first start of 1997. He won this event in 1995. Bobby Gill in the 55 car, making limited starts in ASA, won the only race Jim Daly won as a car owner, trying to put Adol Hilski and the Leo Motorsports crew into victory lane for the first time ever. This rookie team had Tim Sauter up till this race as the driver. A contractual dispute for 1998 made Tim Sauter and the uh, team look at different options for next season. Tim scrambled and gathered up the uh, backup Ford of Jerry Gunderman for this event, a one race deal, so he's continuing to struggle and work on 1997. This team put Gill in the car for this race and the next one for now. Tim Saunders right now runs 17th. Let's check in with Dave Burns on the Dick Trickle story. I'm standing by with Dick, and he's out much earlier than he anticipated, but you're always a story. How good was the car today? Well, you know, we've had a car here that could win the last three years, and uh, we had a couple of engine problems. The day a water pump went out, we lost our water, and the motor was going away, so we had to quit. But I'll tell you what, tire management's a program here. We had a car that could win the race, without a doubt, again, and I uh, got foiled. But Rick Scalzo, you know, and Toby, they do such a good job, bring me a great car. I got to thank Miller Lite for sponsoring us. We'll be back next year. We've been competitive every year, but some of them bites us every time. No matter how much time he spends down south, you can better believe Dick Trickle's going to come home to the Minnesota State Fair. Two American Speed Association championships and four wins in this race here at the Minnesota State Fair for Dick Trickle. Can't wait to see him back here in 1998. Maybe he can add another one. His most recent win came here in 1992, the first year for the new style bodies. He also won the 1991, the last year that ASA ran a super late model style configuration. That's Brandon Sperling in the 51. He runs in fifth. Bobby Gill in the 55, and Gary St. Amant battling it out for six with Joe Knott running right along with him in the 48 car. Joe Knott runs in the eighth position. Now Gary St. Amant, who was up to second position at one point in the race, made a pit stop trying to make his way back through in that lane automotive Chevrolet. Has Joe Knott to the outside, but he mentioned the four team members, Peter Cozzolino, who has a part-time schedule this season at ASA, now has driving experience in ASA. Can relate to Joe Knott on how oh. the car is handling. Contact there, too. Did you see St. Amon get into that right rear or left rear corner? They don't call this great short track racing for nothing. These guys are running extremely tight at speeds exceeding 90 miles per hour in through the turns and down the straightaways here at Minnesota. Well, Dick Trickle is out, but his backup car is leading. Tony Raines looking for his second ASA win of 1997. We'll be right back to the Minnesota State Fair. Tony Raines trying to put a lap on Mike Coper's Black & Decker Versa Pack number 79. The former NASCAR Southwest Tour Rookie of the Year in the 79 car goes down a lap to Tony Raines. Tony Raines started in the 34th position, had passed 12 cars in the first 22 circuits. We see his progress here up to 10th after pit stops and now took the lead away from Dick Trickle on the 87th circuit. Now Raines started 34th this afternoon. He's in good company. The driver that has won two ASA races here is the all-time winner in ASA, Bob Seneker. Seneker runs in the 15th position, but when he won his two races here in 1980, he started 37th. In 1984, he started 34th. So there is a possibility of a driver starting well on the field, like Bob Seneker and like Tony Raines, to win here. And now Raines is about to put the Bluebird a lap down. And Rick Beebe as well in the yellow 23, who's the third place in the points. 
Rick Beebe was absolutely on fire midseason, but coming into the Milwaukee weekend, he had a first and a second place finish at Berlin and Anderson and really struggled to an 11th place finish one week ago. Terry Garrison and his team have done the same preparation. It just seems that they're a little bit off and here going down with 184 circuits to go. What impresses me so much about Tony Reyes today, Jim, is that he's not only passing everybody, but he's doing it the hard way on the outside and he's blowing right by them. He checked out at Jennerstown in his win this season, his seventh career ASA victory. As we see, Brad Loney got way high just in front of the leaders. That could have been trouble. But we also saw domination by another driver earlier this year who has yet to lead since, and that's Jack Landis. He took 75 laps at the point, passing at will, similar to what Reigns is doing here today. He did that at the season opener to Jack Landis in the uh, 07 car. He led 75 laps and put all with the top six a lap down. And he, now, just, he just put Mike Garvey down a lap, too. And Garvey has two wins this year. So another one of the strong cars in this field down a lap. Garvey has two victories this season, but also is fighting some loose conditions. He's found that to be the consistent inconsistency with how the chassis is set up. They've been fighting a loose condition even this afternoon. Now going that lap down. Battling for fifth are these two drivers right here. Car number one, Kevin Sawinski, car 55, Bobby Gill. Jack Landis just in front of them in the 07. He's already lapsed down. Bobby Gill in the 55 car for this race and the next one certainly looks very good after spending time away in the winter of the 1995 Miller 300 here in Minnesota. Continues to set the pace with Kevin Sawinski right ahead of him. Sawinski in sixth, Gill in eighth and seventh. Mike Eddy is in the eighth position. Now, Eddie, Butch Miller, run eighth and ninth here, and we see Butch going around. There are three drivers we know of that have yet to pit that are in the top 20. That includes Mike Eddy, Gary St. Amant, and Dick Trickle and was Dick the Trickle other was one. The other one. Right. A couple of other battles you need to take note of here. Steve Carlson runs in third. He is the leader of the Pat Shaw Rookie of the Year point standings right now. Tim Sauter in the 60 car runs 17th. He is second in those point standings. And even though he is in the other car, he would still get the, the Rookie of the Year if he can hang on and win. Those points do go to the driver. Tony Raines, he was a 1996 ACW Challenge Series champ. He leads it with 123 of the 300 laps completed. Tony Raines in that green number nine is your leader here. Billy Turner has brought his black 58 down pit road. Oh, Big and smoke. smoke out of Mike Miller's number 18. And Raines better be careful. He's right in the middle of all of this. I was going to say, do you want to be three wide behind a pack of car, uh, th cars, three wide ahead of you, and have the car directly ahead of them bring out a big puff of smoke? I don't think so. Raines had a good close call there. His second of the race, Brad Loney went high earlier in the run while Reigns was putting him a lap down. And speaking of putting him a lap down, he's not working on Dave Sensa, but he's already disposed of Gary St. Amant. And just in front of that would be Mike Eddy. So Tony Reigns is now lapping all the way up into the top 10. Eddie and Sensaba are fighting for 10th, and look where Reigns is going to go. He likes the very bottom. We're going to go three wide down the back stretch, and Reigns is going to take him. He gets Eddie, drifts up, and now he's captured it again, and he's going to dive back inside of Sensaba. Tony Reigns is flying today. Considering the last half, last half of the season in 1996, Reigns and Howie Leto and the Baker Motorsports crew went from sixth in points to ultimately the crown jewel of the ASA series, the championship a season ago. Here now in his third ASA start, may have his third top three finish. With more on Tony Reigns' day. Ralph, here's how it goes if you're Tony Raines driving for Rick Scalzo on a very intermittent basis. You call Rick and you tell him what setup you want. Tony called, he said, I want these shocks, these springs, this rear roll center, and this wedge. And apparently, it was a very good call. Well, and don't forget, Mike Eddy started on the pole and Tony Raines started dead last. They just laughed at him. Mike Eddy has yet to make a pit stop. Raines did pit with the other leaders. Uh, cars on lead lap are on lap 62. Tony Raines putting on a clinic here today. And if he ends up winning today, this would be the third different make of car that he has actually wanted a race with. He won in Jim Daly's Pontiac in Jennerstown, Pennsylvania. The next weekend, he went to I-70 and lapped a lot of the field on the outside to win in a Mopar. First truck. win in a, in a truck. And here today, running a Ford 
who knows? I think it's said that the driver is an awesome shoe and that you can put him in anything you want. When that car is right, when he gets what he wants, he's doing extremely well in it. Here is Tim Sauter, Schwister Ford on one side of the car, on the left side, Ware Chevrolet on the right side, and Jerry Gunderman's Trucking Corporation along the back. And those are some of the people that have really helped keep Tim Sauter in the hunt here today for the Pat Shower Rookie of the Year honors. He had absolutely nothing after parting ways with the 55 team this week, which was one of the most shocking things to hit ASA Racing in, in 96, in 97. I don't think anybody would have believed that those two would have parted ways. And that was Tuesday afternoon. By Wednesday, he was in Jerry Gunderman's shop. They put this car back together that Al Schill drove and tore the front bodywork off of it at Milwaukee to a 19th place finish. This car was about race ready, but they put a lot of work into it. Tim had some of the crew members come with him from Leo Motorsports. He's got his brother John Sauter working with him. He has his old Artco car owner and driver Ed Holmes working with him. So he's assembled a bunch of guys that used to race with and work with him to come down here to Franklin, or excuse me, come to Franklin, Wisconsin to get this car running right. The decals weren't even on when I was at the shop on Wednesday, and Tim was on the phone talking to Metalcraft, talking to Ware Chevrolet, talking to Schwister Ford about getting sponsorship together for this event with Jerry Gunderman's ride. So he's got a great opportunity with Jerry Gunderman having that spare car. And it's actually the chassis that Tim made his ASA debut with in Anderson last year. Steve Carlson. He leads the Pat Shower Rookie of the Year standings. He is the one that Tim Sauter is trying to catch. Carlson is up to third here today. Now remember, the other championship fight is the ASA Season Championship. Kevin Sawinski leads that. He runs in seventh. Gary St. Amon is second. We showed at the beginning of the show. He was 200 points behind. He is 13th right now, and Rick Beebe is third. He is in 16th position. Scott Hansen is fourth in the points. He runs second. And Dave Sensaba is fifth in the point standings. And right now, Sensaba is listed in 10th. So that brings up the speed on where all the point contenders are. I'd say Steve Carlson's riding the high crest as well. Last week, he led the most laps at the Milwaukee Mile. For a while, we thought Scott Hansen or Steve Carlson were the only drivers in contention for the win. As it turned out, Bob Seneca, Gary St. Amant took the top two spots away on tire management and pit strategy. Carlson again today had gotten up to second at one point behind early race leader Mike Eddy, who also captured the pole position. Now we see after pit stops, Carlson again is on a tear. Here is Scott Hanson driving the AFCO Chevrolet owned by Winston Cup star Kenny Schrader. This is his 11th start at the Minnesota State Fair for the Green Bay, Wisconsin native. This season he has 10 top 10 finishes and 15 starts. Here at this racetrack, he has six top 10 finishes in those 10 events. So a very good finishing ratio and success ratio for the 1989 Miller 300 winner here at the Minnesota State Fairgrounds. And if I'm not mistaken, wasn't how he let out the crew chief for Scott when he uh, won here? Rookie of the year in 1989, yeah. he won here and Milwaukee in consecutive and weeks. And now how he let out spinning the wrenches for Steve Carlson, who runs just behind him. I asked uh, Scott about that, said, hey, did you get uh, the notes on that? He said, no, how he's got all those. <laughs> he also said he threw away his notebook from a year ago. He did not have the greatest of runs. Wasn't happy with his 13th place finish, so he said we went back to our Milwaukee setup, and it seems to be working out. But look at Reigns on a tear. Brings in a half of a crew that he knew he called the week out again. I'm going to be at the Minnesota State Fair. Can you help me out? Lisa Smokestad's helping out this guy. Mike Hoskins is helping out. Jiggs and Marlene Myers are helping out. These are crew members and dedicated friends and fans of Tony Raines putting this car together along with Toby Noodleman to make this stout run as the leader of the event. Raines has led, I would guess, the most laps at this point in the event. Tony Raines looking for his second ASA victory of the 1997 season. He's getting ready to put the points leader a lap down. Tony Raines, what a day. <laughs> Tony Raines in that green number nine. Going the, on the outside of Joe Knott in the 48. Rick Beebe in the 23. They go three wide down into three as Knott gets inside of Beebe. Beebe's in the 16th position. Joe Knott in the fourth position. So, wow, he's lapped all but the top two cars and himself. Can't lap yourself, but I'm saying he's up to third place in lapping, guys. The way Tony Raines is going today, he, could he lap might himself. lap himself, Dave. <laughs> this is Tony Raines' car. Rick Scalzo is the car owner. I saw you leap a mile when he went three wide a minute ago. You're really into this, aren't you? I, I can't hear what you said, but Tony's doing a great job. How 
do you put together such a great race car for him? Toby, Toby Noodleman, my crew chief. He, he's the best in the business. You know, we don't run full time, but he does a good job. And, and would you like it if Tony didn't run three wide all day like that? All day long like that. You know, and I want to thank Miller and Artie Cat and all the people that helped us get here, and Neil Larson and the fair and everybody. It's just a great race so far. He about did a flip when Tony went to the outside with Rick Beebe and the Joe Knott to his side earlier. Rick owns Motorsports of Rice Lake, which has been a longtime sponsor. It's on the quarter panel of this number nine, Team Menards Ford. That is one of the nation's largest Polaris and Articat distributors in the country, based in Rice Lake, Wisconsin. So, yeah, it took a whole lot of equipment to get here, but these guys certainly know how to get the job done. Toby Noodleman working right at the shop full time preparing cars for Rick Skelzo. Halfway through the 300 laps here, the Miller 300, you can see we've got five cars on the lead lap. That's because of the domination of Tony Raines. We've had four different leaders and three different lead changes. Only three cautions for 20 laps. Brandon Sperling pretty loose behind Gary St. Amant, the 51 car Sperling. Now behind the wall trickle, Junior Hanley and Carol Adamy. 34 cars started this one, so 33 of them, 31 of them still lapping around this beautiful and scenic half mile here in the Minnesota State Fair. And there were 38 cars here, Ralph. Uh, Kurt Martin, Sam Gottwald, Mark Kaloff, and Andy Burgess were the cars that did not start this event, weren't quick enough in time or had enough car owner points to make the field. Tony Raines almost did not start this event, and there's 33 guys out there who wish he had. Right he had a very poor qualifying effort. Reigns was running about 20th, 25th quick in practice. Looking at the computer readouts, he got up to 12th quickest with a fresh set of tires late in the practice session. He practiced the majority of that entire 60 minutes on used, worn tires to get a feel for the car again. They put on the new rubber, new uh, tires. Oh, Mike Miller, the driver who won this race last year, looks like he will be bringing out the fourth caution of the day. This is something Mike Eddy and Gary St. Amont desperately needed. And the yellow is out. So Gary St. Amont and Mike Eddy get something they desperately needed, an opportunity to pit and take on fresh tires. They hadn't pitted yet today. They had gone 160 laps, Jim, without changing tires, did Mike Eddie and Gary Sinamont. You know, those are some worn out Goodyear tires. Now, that strategy may have worked at different racetracks this season, waiting till about halfway to pit. This up being a 300 lap race. Teams generally like to wait for the first 100 laps on a half mile, like we have it here at the Minnesota State Fair. The teams, however, know the tire wear is critical. When those teams stayed out, they were also among the first cars on lead lap to go a lap down. We see the City Club beer sponsored. Number 18 now being pushed behind the wall and looks like Mike Miller's day is over. He won his first ever ASA race here in 1981 and won't back up last year's victory with his third win. And Hansen down pit road. Scott Hansen's 52. Well, you figure he fit it on lap 62 and now we're at lap 160, so that's 100 on the rear tires. He changes both rear tires on the AFC and the AFCO number 52. Talk to his tire specialist, Joe Miller, rolling the tire back. He had said that rear tires are critical here. And they're going to bring him back in as a penalty, Jim, because I didn't think pit road was open then, but I didn't want to say anything until I knew for sure. Oops. So a stop and go for Scott Hansen. That is going to hurt his chances here today. And he may have been one of the handful of guys that had something for Tony Raines. He was on lead lap running in the second position when he pitted too early. Yeah, here comes everybody else. Tony Raines, Gary St. Amant, Mike Garvey, Butch Miller, Steve Carlson, Kevin Sawinski, Harold Fair, Bobby Gill. They all dive down pit road, Dave. Ralph, the crew goes to work for Tony Raines. This is the same Ford Thunderbird that Steve Holzhausen drove at Cedar Rapids, then at Lacrosse, nearly won there, and then did win at Berlin Raceway. The car is fast. The crew is not having too much trouble, but they go to the rear, now having trouble on the right rear. He is down and just out of here. Everything looks okay, but he did take a little bit longer than some of the other competitors. Mike Eddy will come down with the next wave, which is making its way around the racetrack, but he is pulled down to the lower side, ready to make his way down pit road. Some of the huge crowds, some 25,000 here in the grandstands of the Minnesota State Fair enjoying the Miller 300.
We have just gone back to green here with the AC Delco Challenge Series at the Miller 300. Scott Hansen is the leader. Now, we thought that he pitted when pit lane was closed. Dave Burns, what's the story? Well, the report I'm getting is that Scott Hansen is actually in second place one lap down, that Tony Raines is the leader, but that Scott is in second place. When he was a lap down earlier and the yellow came out, there was no pit close sign. So Scott, seeing that, dove down pit road. He was the only one that took advantage of that. Unfortunately, he is still one lap off the pace running in second. Well, the ASA timing and scoring system shows him leading in Reigns in second, not in third. I'm wondering Butch if Miller in fourth and Kevin Sawinski fifth. There's only two cars separating Scott Hansen, three cars now from the nine of Tony Reigns. So with that being broken out, is he back on the end of the lead lap or is he a lap down going about two laps down? And Mike Eddy with a problem in the 88 car. Eddie waited his turn, came down pit lane, took on rear tires, and now looks like he's fighting an extremely loose race car. He spun off a of turn two and continues to run the inside line a little bit off the pace. Now he's back up to speed. Mike, they show in 12th position right now. The scoring system is now caught up with Tony Raines up front. Hanson slots back to second, not Miller, Sawinski. Carlson, Gill, Seneca, Kofer up to ninth, and Sensaba in 10th. This race does play out in different ways. In 1983, Jim Sauter led all 300 laps and was the only driver to finish on lead lap. Right now, Tony Raines has a lap on the field in the Articat Ford. And he's about to get Joe Nott again. Butch Miller on the outside of Joe Knott. That's the Justice Brothers number two. Oh, Butch. Problems in the two. When he pulled off the gas pedal and went hard left, little did he know, right behind him were two cars, including Brad Loney, that he nearly made contact with. Tony Raines now working on the seven-time champ, Mike Getty. And he's still looking for his first victory in 1997. We talked about it earlier, Jim, how he looked so strong in the early stages of this one, just like he did at Tri-City and Berlin twice and Jennerstown and Milwaukee. Yet things go wrong, and Mike doesn't find his way into victory lane. And today, he got hung out. I know he didn't plan on going 160 laps before another yellow allowed him to pit, but it did today. It's an average of seven cautions during this Minnesota Miller 300. and. We only have had five cautions, four cautions, excuse me. The most recent came out on lap 160, but that was the first time Mike Eddy and Gary St. Amant came down pit lane. Eddy subsequently spun five laps after that, half spin, lost a lot of track position, and now another lap to the leader, Tony Raines out of LaPorte, Indiana. Joe Nott in the 48 car runs in third. Look at Gary St. Amant three wide into turn three. Up underneath Joe Nott. That's why, what, 18 to 25,000 fans pack this place each and every Labor Day to see the stars of the American Speed Association, the best short track racers in the business, doing laps here at the Minnesota State Fair. The report is a potential left rear tire going down for Mike Eddy, who runs in 12th position right now. He's been fighting the wheel off the corner. If you see his hands tugged to the right, that means the car is starting to drift or almost spin off the turn, and he's had to correct it. He's on the outside of Scott Hansen, who's listed in second right now. Brad Loney runs behind them. Brad in 25th position. And here comes Gary St. Amon in the seven car. Gary up to 13th. He's actually battling with Eddie for 12th right now. That's a fight for position, and he'll take it. Mike Eddie might have just said to the guys, is St. Amon running me for position? They might have said, yeah, and he got back in the gas pedal. Of course, Gary second in the point standings right now. Kevin Sawinski, who leads him, is fourth in the field. So it doesn't look like Gary would gain a whole lot of ground right now in the points chase. With a, what, we got five, six races left to go this season? Five races after today. I-70 Speedway, the next one on the docket, two weeks from Saturday. Then TNN will return the week after that on Friday night with part of TNN's Motor Madness coverage. We'll be coming to you live on a Friday night from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Another place with a packed grandstand that loves their ASA. September 19th is the date on that one. They're looking for Brad Loney and other Iowa drivers like Justin Dirks running in the field today to return home and run well in front of the hometown crowd. 
And it's not an easy thing for Tony Raines just to climb behind the wheel of this green number nine because the Ford is a race car that is much different than the General Motors products in this field. It's a lot heavier in the nose. It makes for a lot difference in how the car handles. I eavesdropped in on the discussion of Tony Raines and Toby Noodleman. He said, I don't know what to tell you about the motor because I'm used to a Chevrolet or a Pontiac power plant. I've never driven a Ford to tell you what's maybe missing in the motor. We said they thought they had a cut down left rear tire on Mike Getty's car, so they'll change the rears. Drop the Pontiac back down to the ground and Mike will return. Brandon Sperling in the 51, and watch this from a lap ago. Dave Sensaba in the six car, seriously loose. We've seen Brad Loney get loose going into turns one and two, and we see Sensaba trying to hold on to the inside of Doug Mayer. Wow, he gets into him. Doug Mayer, the world-class go-karter in the number 11, does a great job of holding on, and Bilderbach just below them in the 64. Here we see Justin Dirksen, the 19 car, the Iowa driver, 17 years. Tim Sauter, the Wears Chevrolet, Schwister Ford, Gunderman 60. Gets a look at Tony Raines, who comes by on the outside. Boy, sometimes you just hit it right, don't you? Tim Tony. Sauter in 14th position, now goes down another lap to Tony Raines. We've had races here where we've had 14 cars finish on lead lap. Raines has really blistered the field here at the Minnesota State Fair Speedway. Mentioned Tim Sauter, a different situation, trying to work his own situation out for the remainder of the year, runs 14th. His arch rival in the rookie standings, Tim Car uh, Steve Carlson, runs in the seventh position between Joe Nott and Mike Colfer for that position. Reigns in his 144th career ASA start, dating back to 1988. Currently is 17th in the truck points with one win and seven top 10 finishes. Let's take a look at the battle going on for 11th position. That's a ways back behind this one. Here it is. Mike Eddy in the 88 car in this fight. Mike Miller in the 18. Now remember, Eddie has come back with those new rear tires. And we've got a yellow from Roger Slack. And I don't see why. Oh, there it is, Alec Pinsano, the 93 car. That's in turn number two, very tricky corner. It's where most of the uh, altercations have happened today. Mostly and, single car spins. And some debris now over in turn two, it looks like. And Alec Pinsano, who's loaned a motor out to uh, Tom Jones earlier this weekend, will bring out the yellow. Now with this yellow, every time there's a yellow, it seems like Tony Raines takes advantage of it. He'll come down and take on some more tires. He's gonna take right side tires this time. Hanson dives down. He's gonna take right side tires as well. Recall last time Scott Hansen took on rear tires, so the left front tire on Scott Hansen number 52 is yet to be changed. That is the tire with least amount of wear, but he changed rears last time by. This time he goes back to the right-hand side of the car to change those two tires. And Hansen beats him out. Fresh tires on both of the leaders. Can Scott Hansen hold off Tony Raines? Might win a big Winnie the Pooh if he does. Tuned in, this is a Miller 300. It's the only race you will ever see from this racetrack this season. That's because they only run one race here a year, and it's the AC Delco Challenge Series that gets the privilege of competing on this beautiful half mile. The first year we put the AC Delco Challenge Series on TNN, we were able to come here and show you the race from here. And it's been a few years since we've been back. It's good to see it back in our regular TV schedule. We're back to green. Scott Hansen and Tony Raines leading the Miller 300. Scott Hansen's in that white 52. The green number nine is the one that runs in second. Kevin 
Sawinski in the one car, the series points leader, he's up to third. But he is not on the lead lap. He is two laps down. Hansen and Reigns, the only two cars on the lead lap. And Hansen almost went three wide there with 10 smokes that, and that build the mold trim class number 32. Here is the inside of Mike Miller, the season veteran. Won this race a year ago by putting on tires very late in the race to win the event. Tony Raines finished third here a year ago, but his tire guy, Mike Hoskins, was telling me, we came in and fitted right side tires in the Baker Motorsports number 87 one season ago. We ended up third because the next guy in the pits was Ted Smokestead. He changed right rear tires. The next guy in the pits was the race winner, Mike Miller. He changed right-hand side tires. Then he came in the next lap under caution and swapped left side tires. You can only change two. Doesn't say you can't move two on the car. And he went on to victory circle. There's Noodleman in the 21. He was strong early on. He is back out on the track after being in the pits for quite a while. He runs 30th right now. Your top 10 is Hanson, Reigns, Sawinski, not Bobby Gill. That's your top five. Sentiba, Butch Miller, Steve Carlson, Paul Payne having a pretty good run. Seneca and Cooper all up in that bunch. Mike Cooper is running in the 10th position in that Black & Decker Versa Pack number 79. He finished 10th one race ago, so if he can back that up, I'd say it's a victory at this point in the season. Currently third in the Pat Sharma Memorial Rookie of the Year standings. Having a great run, and I'd say something to build on for 1998, teaming up with Buddy and Donnie Schrock in Plain City, Ohio. A great run for the former place kicker for the San Francisco 49ers. You know, it's interesting, Jim, as we watch Scott Hansen leading here in the Miller 300, the last couple of years, the ringers and the regulars have kind of swapped out in victory lane. Back in 1994, it was Mike Eddy, one of the regulars that got victory lane. In 95, it was Bobby Gill, one of the ringers. And last year, Mike Miller, one of the regulars. So Hansen can pull it off, then it's one for the regulars. If Reigns gets it, well, then it's one for the ringers again. They're due. The list of drivers that have raced here at the Minnesota State Fairgrounds is a who's who of motorsports. Rusty Wallace, Kenny Wallace, Butch Lindley won his only ASA race here in, 1990, in 1981 in that Ray Dillon Cavalier Mountain Dew V6 car. And Tony Raines had worked with Ray Dillon. Really, that's how he got his break in auto racing. Raines currently running second. Lynn Miller. I'm sorry, Joe. No, go right ahead. Lynn Miller is the crew chief for Scott Hansen, our leader, and Dave Burns is with him. Yeah, we're standing by here. What do you think about that Ford behind you? Can Scott hold him off? Did you give him enough? I think we did. He's, he's pretty satisfied with the car today. We were a little bit tight on the first green flag session. Did a rear tire stop, which helps a lot. Now we're back in normal sequence, and he's pretty happy with the car now. I think the Ford can stay where it is today. Now, what about these big clouds that are coming in now? This tr track was real loose because of the sun. Is that going to hurt or help you? It hasn't really been affecting us that much today as much as it was last week in Milwaukee, so I, I think we're going to be good to the end here. Probably stop one more time. Not that the load, two cars are on the lead lap. We do it anything we want, so win the race. And it looks, guys, from down here like that rain that was forecast at about 30% isn't anywhere near us, so that doesn't appear to be a factor either. Well, Dave, they said they thought if it did come in, it would be late, late in the afternoon. Um, this race tends to move along pretty quickly. As you can see, we've already put in 210 laps. And we're going to hold all the way back here and show you the fight going on back here for sixth position. And it's in that bunch in there. Currently holding six is Bobby Gill. He's in the 55, the white and blue car with the orange numerals. There he is. The winner of this race two years ago, Dave Sensiba, the red and white number six, is in sixth, in seventh position. Carlson is in this fight as well. He is in the 87, and Brandon Sperling. He is actually listed in 19th position in the 51. So even though the leaders are dominating this one, Hanson and Reigns, there's some good racing going on behind them. Well, Dave Sensabas had two top five finishes here at this racetrack, so it's been a very good track for the 1994 Pat Shaw Memorial Rookie of the Year winner. As he goes inside Steve Holtzhausen, Holtzhausen raced to the first race here with his brother in 1978. Holtzhausen, the Black Five, the House Lubricator Ford, running out of Bangor, Wisconsin, ran in a Ford Fairmont. His brother was in a Maverick in those days. So certainly some history for the Holtzhausen family here at Minnesota State Fair. 
Steve Carlson, he's a rookie on the circuit, but at Trop Arctic, Ringer's Resource Pontiac driver has had four starts here at the Minnesota State Fair. We mentioned he could run up to eight races in a given year without having to declare rookie status. Carlson's teamed up now with the team Holtzhausen used to drive for. Holtzhausen won Rookie of the Year with the Baker Motorsports team. That coming in 1992. Now it's Carlson's turn at the wheel. And Steve Carlson, the 87 car, has one top 10 finish coming here in 1996. Rick, better that today. Rick Beebe in the yellow 23 is in 14th and moving up through the field, trying to get some laps back. Less than 100 laps to go here in the Miller 300. There's Bob Seneker in the Bluebird, the 84 car. He is up to 9th. He sits 10th in the point standings. Mike Eddy was 11th in the point standings, and Mike runs 15th. So if Bob can hang on, he'll hold on to his spot in the top 10 of the point standings. The Miller 300, less than 100 laps to go. Can Tony Raines catch Scott Hansen? Lisa Smokestad's got some good tires for him, ready for the finish. We're back to the Miller 300 where Scott Hansen leads. Hansen, if he can hold on and get the win, it'd be his first win in 1997 and his first in 32 races, Jim. Dating back to Indianapolis Raceway Park on June 15th of last year when he passed Kevin Sawinski with 15 laps to go for the win. This would also mean if he holds on, he'll be the ninth different winner in 1997 to score a victory. His winless streak would be snapped. Bob Seneker snapped his winless run of 25 races one week ago. Hansen sits at 32. And unfortunately for Mike Getty, it may not come today. He may have to wait his 28th race without a victory, heading into I-70 I Speedway in two weeks. The other big winless drought is Dave Sensible, who's still looking for his first career one. Hard to believe that is still the case. Let's take you back through the field a little bit and show you some of the other cars who are competing here today. There's our leader there in second place, Tony Raines, car number nine, and behind him, Gary St. Amon. St. Amon right now is second in the point standings, and he is 12th in the race here today. Behind him is the points leader, the Tecumseh number one. That, of course, is Kevin Sawinski. He runs third, so St. Amont not going to make up any ground in the point standings today. Sawinski has yet to finish out of the top 10 in any race in 1997. There's Scott Hansen in heavy traffic. The green number nine is Tony Raines. That's first and second on the track. We go back to Sawinski in third, one lap down. Tecumseh signing on for the remainder of the 1997 season. Scott LeFevre is walking on air, signing that sponsorship and doing well for that sponsored agreement. Signed one race ago and continues through the rest of the season. There's Dirks in the 19 car. He's 29th and behind him is Carlson in the 87 car. Now Steve is the Rookie of the Year point leader for the Pat Shower Rookie of the Year award. He is fourth in the field. Car 87. Joe Nott is fifth in the overall serial. He runs now behind Jason, Justin Dirks, excuse me, the Valvoline Ravy Ford, Alan Nott, Honda Toyota sponsored car based out of Michigan. Spring, Haven, Spring Heights, Michigan driver. And behind Joe Nott is a 47 car, Payne, one of the Mount Minnesota native. Good to see him racing with us again. This brightly colored car is 13th on this afternoon. A great run for him. This race car, he was uh, given in exchange for masonry work on a sport court for Scott LeFevre. This is the car Kevin Swinski piloted one year ago. One of the cars in their fleet. Now it belongs to the 47 of Paul Payne. Bobby Gill in the 55 car. He runs in sixth position in the 23 car. Rick Beebe, he is third in the point standings. He is 14th today. Behind him comes Ted Smokestad, who ran second in this race last year. Smokestad, the trim blast build a mole car, is 16th in the field, the Eichen Chevrolet sponsored entry. Brandon Sperling in the 51 car, right behind him. Sperling is 19th. We thought he was really going to have trouble even getting in this race. He is inside the top 20 here today. Had run up as high as in the eighth position did Brandon Sperling, the truck air transfer Chevrolet. Bob yep. Seneker behind him. Seneker, the Bluebird, with the winner at Milwaukee, is seventh here today. New York Auto Sales and Lane Automotive helping out Bob. And again, it's a combined effort. His team comes from all parts of the country, mostly from Michigan, to help the Bluebird. Former ASA champion Butch Miller, three times he was crowned the champ, and he runs in eighth here today for Jim Daly's number two, the Justice Brother entry. And Dave Sensba missing the right front. Sensba is in ninth. He's in the top five of the point standings, and a ninth-place finish will help him. 
behind them. Here's Tim Sauter in that number 60 car. Swisher Ford, Ware Chevrolet, and Jerry Gunderman helping out this young driver. Continue on, he is 17th in the points, or 17th in the race. And Bilderbach in the 64 car is 27th right there in the purple 64. Yeah, Ricky has spent a couple of laps behind the wall in the Finnegan's RV Center Pontiac, and he, uh, He's going to he's gonna have better days. He's a three-time Rockford Speedway track champion, trying his hand here in ASA in the latter half of 97. Brad Loney, he'll be looking forward to going back to Cedar Rapids in a couple of weeks on TNN. He is 24th in that 33 car. And the 81 car of Harold Fair ran great in Milwaukee, struggling here today. He holds on to the 20th position. Harold Fair has had some outstanding runs this season in the CarQuest AC Delco Pontiac. I'll tick off today, and as strong as the leaders are running, Equates to Harold Fair running in the 20th spot, a couple of laps off the pace. Three cars going wide into turn three. Gary St. Amant, one of them, in the seven car. Gary is 12. Hanson, of course, your leader in the 52, and you saw Billy Turner's 58 in there. Billy is 23rd in that black and red 58. Scott Hansen trying to take up some valuable point positions on Gary St. Amon. It was a neck and neck race in the middle part of the year for second in the point standings, with Gary St. Amon having his best ASA season ever and Hansen having some problems as of late with some ignition wires and that kind of thing, dropping him off the top three. He's fourth in points trying to gain some valuable positions on St. Amon and Sawinski here today. Tom Jones' zero went by as well. Jones right now. Looking on our rundown, he's listed at 28th position. We see this racetrack is fairly clean yet. We race here, the ASA series race here once a year. Not a lot of rubber's been put down, but I'm sure up outside the groove, there's a lot of those marbles that have built up from the tires. Once the tires go across this cheese grater type surface in the turns, they really lose a lot of adhesion and a lot of rubber on these tires. We saw the leader of the race, Mike Eddy here in the car number 88, actually go back to fourth and fifth positions while staying on the racetrack. Other race leaders, including Tony Raines and Dick Trickle, had better tire wear at that point in the race when they assumed the point. Here we see Eddie going around the 79 of Mike Kofer and Ralph, as you mentioned, Kofer is seriously in the hunt for a top 10 run yet today. Mike runs in 10th and Mike Eddie runs in 15th, so Kofer having a good run. And there's Gary St. Amant, who sits in 11th. He's right behind Kofer. Kofer and St. Amant are actually battling for 10th position right now. Mike Cooper, a winner on NASCAR Southwest Tour Series, the same year that he won their Rookie of the Year award, battling with Gary St. Amon. The wins, Lane Automotive, West Michigan Chevy Dealers, number seven inside. St. Amont will take over the 10th position. That moves Cooper back to 11th, and the leader comes by trying to put them both down another lap. This action in front of leader Scott Hansen, Green Bay, Wisconsin native, has his daughters Jody and Amy with him this weekend. Wants to end that 31 race drought. Alec Vincent on that 93 runs in 27. Well, Hanson continues to keep Tony Reigns at arm's length. Hey, Trado, there's one about our speed. Scott Hanson continues to lead here at the Miller 300. St. Paul, Minnesota. Minnesota State Fairgrounds. We're in the Twin Cities with the AC Delco Challenge Series. Kevin Noodleman trying to get a lap back in the 21 car. He runs in 30th. And he does so. This is the 10th state that the AC Delco Challenge Series will visit in its 20 race schedule. Return trips to I-70 Speedway, Hawkeye Downs Speedway in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Kenley, North Carolina, Jennerstown, Pennsylvania, among the stops left on the 1997 schedule, as well as Salem, Indiana. Coming up October 5th, Sunday afternoon, make sure you catch that action live on TNN. And it's not the only venue that the American Speed Association has competed on in the state of Minnesota. As you look at Gary St. Amant and Rick Beebe, very slow on the bottom of the racetrack. We'll see what that does. We've seen two guys not make it all the way back around. St. Amant right now runs third, although he is two laps down, and if Phoebe doesn't coast all the way around, that might help out Gary get a lap back. And Gary is 100 points or thereabouts ahead of Rick Beebe in the point standing, so as badly as Rick Beebe's running, St. Amant in third can pick up a ton of points on Rick Beebe in the spread back from second to third. You see Beebe coasting in that yellow 23. down 
Elliott Road, the St. Louis gear, number 23. Rick Beebe has had an incredible run prior to his victory at Berlin Raceway. He had a strong run. Under the hood they go, Dave. Yeah, the last time he came by, the car was popping and banging like they had an ignition problem. We're trying to change the box over. Now they're going deeper underneath. It's definitely motor problems. He's got a lot of significant fiberglass damage as well, but this looks criminal. They've had a problem all day of these long greens. They just haven't had time to come in and fight the handling situation for Rick. So Terry Garrison was pretty frustrated before this happened. Now he's devastated. And problems for Ted Smokestad as well. A cut down left left front tire on the trip last night in Chevrolet build them all number 32. This driver finished second here last year. I would say this would be Ted Smokestead's home track on the AC Delco Challenge Series schedule. Huge crowd for his announcement when uh, they did drive introductions. Lives just 20 miles away from here in Bloomington, Minnesota. He had Butcher's auto body on the side of his car. I believe it is only start of 1994, finished 17th. 38th and 95 and second here a year ago. Scott Hansen continues the lead in that 52. Harry St. Juan just in front of him runs in third. Just 43 laps to go here at the Miller 300. Scott Hansen looking for his first victory of 1997. Rusty Wallace, Larry Deachins, Don Gregory, Tom Refner, Mark Martin, Joe Shear, Bush Lindley. Those are just some of the names that have found victory lane in ASA competition here at the Minnesota State Fair. Scott Hansen has been there before. He's looking to pull Kenny Schrader's number 52 into victory lane here this afternoon of the Miller 300. Steve Holzhausen just brought the house lubricator for down pit lane, a quick right side tire change. So as Dick Trickle alluded to, when he dropped out of the race after taking the lead, it will be a tire race. As Dave Burns just described on pit lane, it has become a tire run of, uh, as Dick Trickle would say, nutrition. The attrition is going to take its toll. We saw Ted Smokestad with a left front tire down. Brad Loney has experienced some tire problems this event. So Hansen, after coming in on that final pit stop, making a right side tire change, his crew chief, Lynn Miller, told us, we now are in right sequence. It appears that his car is faster at this point in the race than Tony Raines. Raines, however, Ralph Sheen, has stayed on the same straightaway as Hansen for the last 50 laps or so, content to run second at this point, and he may make a stretch run here, trying to conserve those Goodyear Eagle tires. There's Tony right there. Not only is Rick Beebe down pit road, but he's now behind the wall, Dave. Rick Beebe had a problem that is fixable, but it put him way out of contention for the win. An alternator belt came off. It drained the battery. The only good news is, is that they don't have to remove the entire front of the engine to get that belt back on. They're rolling the car back and forth right now to try to work the alternator belt back onto the front of the motor. He is in 27th right now and still dropping as laps continue to go down here. The Miller 300. Rick's worst finish of the year was a 22nd place finish after losing the lead and a rear end at Kenley, North Carolina, the season's first race. Let's talk a little bit, oh, look at this battle for seventh going on here. Bobby Gill in the 55 car is in seventh. Seneca in this 84 car runs behind him and Butch Miller in the two car. That's seventh, eighth, and ninth. So three of the best short track stock car drivers anywhere in the country battling it out for seventh position. Give it to Seneca right now in the 84. Once again, proving the best short track racing is here at the American Speed Association. Butch Miller in 1994, prior to moving to the truck series, said the American Speed Association has the best drivers. I love this series. I will always consider the drivers I'm racing against at ASA some of the best I've ever competed against. That's about the third time today we've seen Brad Loney in that Bun Saber 33 up near the wall in turns one and two. He is in 23rd position, struggling in that Bun Saber Pontiac. Seneca and Miller couple of former champ. There goes Brad again. Boy, he's really having a tough time in one and two. Butch Miller is a three-time champion, but also this is his 222nd career start dating back to 1975 in ASA. Long career for the driver of the two car, making his second start of the 1996 se the 1997 season. 
Butch Miller, the three-time champ. Dave, what do you know about him today? Well, Ralph, a lot of guys did complain about only coming here once a year, only getting an hour of practice. Butch Miller said, oh, I love this place. He says, you get out here, the track is green. you got to be a driver. Every moment, you're on the edge. You go into the turns, you can't abuse the right front. You come off of the turns, you can't abuse the right rear. Butch Miller would love to race in Minnesota every week if it stayed this green. He just picked up another spot, too, in the Justice Brothers Gillen Enterprises, car number two, Jim Daly owns that car it sat in victory lane the last year here or two years ago here with bobby gill behind the wheel gill now runs two spots behind it in nine daily for quite a few years based out of minnesota now based out of north carolina has this car along with his wife deb daily down in north carolina working on this car when they have free time and this is the team that tony reigns won with and Jennerstown, Pennsylvania. Oh, Billy Turner brings out a yellow. Justin Dirks and the Allen Dirks. Dirks Limited 19 narrowly escapes an injury there, or at least contact with Billy Turner's car. He spun, and as he wiggled to a stop there, Ralph, Justin Dirks was on the binders coming off the corner on the outside. Well, we'll take a look at it when we come back from this commercial break. We'll find out what put Billy Turner out of today's race. Again, this season, you have the opportunity to win a unit in Bearcat Scanner along with a one-year Racers Frequency membership from Racing Electronics. Just send your name and address on a postcard to Racing Electronics, P.O. Box 241921, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28224. Now, we'll announce the winner during each ASA telecast here on TNN throughout the year. So send in your card today. This week's winner is Earl Edmondson from Glendale, Arizona. Enjoy your scanner from Racing Electronics. Earl, congratulations. And Racing Electronics is the official supplier of communications for the American Speed Association and technical, direct, technical director of the series. Steve Farmer wanted to make sure I said hi to his mom, Louise Isaacs, watching her first ASA race this evening in Delray Beach, Florida. So Steve says, Mom, I haven't seen you in a while, but I certainly want to say hi to you on the broadcast. And speaking of saying hello, we are going to say goodbye to a very important person on the uh, American Speed Association crew. Flagman Roger Slack graduated college in this past June. Roger Slack, the uh, starter for the American Speed Association at the age of 23 is now a college graduate, has spent five years with the series. He is moving to a marketing firm in Chicago. This is Roger Slack's final event as the starter of the American Speed Association. So we certainly want to wish Roger all the best and success in his new marketing efforts. And uh, he will certainly be missed, Ralph, as he is certainly a showman on the flag stand. He sure is. And of course, his grandfather, Bob Slack, was the owner and operator of Cayuga Speedway up in Canada, eastern portion of Canada, where ASA used to compete on a regular basis. Now, I'll show you this replay here. This is Steve Carlson, the 87. He's getting into Gary St. Amant's 7 and looking Hanson right in there. And Gary's not done yet. The right front headlight gets damaged before this caution is out. But this is the lap going off of turn number four. Now, watch Turner is just in front of them in the 58. Gary gets lifted there, nudged by the 87 of Carlson enough to push Gary into the 58 car. As Billy Turner came down the racetrack, St. Amant had the 87 car behind, so he couldn't check up. Turner came down a bit, they made contact. And look at Hanson going by on the outside. The race leader, feeling pretty lucky today. Cool move of the race so far for Hanson on the outside. Now, one of the crew members of Harold Fair, there you see Harold in the 81, got injured during that last round of pissed off, Dave? Yeah, and of course, that's one of the dangers when you're a tire changer and you're stuck out there on the outside. It got very tight down here, as you guys were seeing. Cars everywhere, stacked three deep, and Mike Volgerson, who is a tire changer in the rear for Harold, or on the, he was on the right side anyway of Harold Fair's car, had his foot run over, apparently by Mike Garvey's car. It was really congested down here. He is in pain, and they're working on that foot now. The medics are down here. He is awake and alert, but he's got some real pain in that foot. Well, the ASA car weighs about 2,800 pounds, so pulls over your foot. That's eh, not going to feel too good. Hopefully, he's okay. Scott Hansen feels pretty good. He's out front, 278 to 300 laps complete. Stay with us. We're coming to the finish. A lot of fun to be had here at the Minnesota State Fair. It's the second largest state fair in the country. We had a chance to enjoy the fair yesterday, and as I'm trying to get 
Oh, there we go. Sensible. Seven, cheating. Boy, he cheated. I was he's trying cheating. to see what he was doing instead of rolling my golf ball. He's cheating. Isn't it? He soaked his golf ball, I think. Dave Burns. We got in the bumper cars yesterday. We told everybody to hit Dave. Apparently, you were one of the targets there, Ralph. Sensible. Cheating again. I saw him going under the hood on that bumper car to get the governor off it. Whack the dribble. Was that what this was? Whack the gerbil, and uh, none of us won. Some 12-year-old girl across the way beat us all. Sensible cheating again. Here goes your wife again. This ride, Bart Benson's on there, Dave Sensible, Larry, a couple of crew guys. This ride goes up in the air. You're locked in, then they turn you completely upside down, and they kind of let you hang there and spin for a while. I was getting woozy watching this one. Yeah. Dave Burns was on that ride, too. Dave, Dave Sensible was on that ride. Yeah, there were two guys who weren't on that ride, though, and kind of totally wussed out. That would be us. I mean, there were three in green shirts up there, but only one would take hey, to the hey, evolution. Hey, somebody had to run the camera, no. and somebody had to take notes about the guy running the camera. And, and Dave, let's just put it this way. With you coming off of that ride, we were the only two guys in green shirts that did not have a green face. You didn't oh, look good enough I don't think so. I had no green. You know, and that wasn't as bad as some of the rides I've been on. That one actually... Didn't get you woozy like some do, but tell, I, I will tell you, you spent a lot of time pressed up against the bar upside down. I'll take your word for it. There's no way you're gonna get me on those rides. But we have a lot of fun at the ferry yesterday. Finding things on a stick, and then, you know, Sensible's guys turning us onto that ride that went upside down, and they really gave us a lot of, hey, a lot of grief over Burns there. Burns does the rides well, we do the food well. Right. What do you want me to that's say? Right. Well, it's obvious. Ah, uh, these folks having a great time here. The American Speed Association making its annual visit to the Minnesota State Fair. The Miller 300 is winding down. Stay with us. Scott Hanson, Tony Raines battling for the win. Under a lengthy caution here as we uh, get things cleared up, so we're going to show you Ralph's expertise at the basketball hoop. Now, Trino, uh, ad admit the... There's me. The, that's the left. Oh, I got rim. I got rim. I didn't hit air. One-handed. Now, the ball was pumped up to about 5,000 pounds of yeah. air pressure, and the only way you're going to get it through the hoop is to get a swish. I mean, the form wasn't too bad. I got, I got the rim. That's all I'm going to tell you. Yeah, but the form was yeah. pretty good. I was going for the swish. You were just shooting for metal. It's a whole different game. Did you see how right on I was? I was a couple inches off. I think this... This uh, battle will have to be squared up after the race in the fair, in the uh, midway there, Ralph. We'll decide who's better after the run. These two are going to settle it out here today for the Miller 300. Scott Hansen in the white 52 is your leader. Tony Raines at green number nine. He runs in second. Mike Miller in the 18 car trying to get out of the way. He's laps down. He's in 20th. Mike Miller is eight laps down. Oh, and Raines gets into him. Tony Raines wants to get clear to the leader for the finish here in the lap car of Mike Miller. Came out of the inside and Tony met him with the front bumper of that green Articat Ford. And Mike Miller was able to capitalize on problems with a lap car earlier this year, when, which cost Rick Beebe a win. And here, he might have gotten in the way of Tony Raines getting a win. That was lacrosse fairground speedway where he picked up his second victory of 1997. And Hanson in search of his first. And as we mentioned, Tony Raines only limited schedule in ASA is looking for his second win this season. Winning at Jennerstown on Jim Daly's car. This is Rick Skelzo's prepared car to the Rice Lake, Wisconsin. Motorsports of Rice Lake and Articat sponsoring along with Team Menard on the nine car today. Reigns fell back to eight tenths of a second behind. Let's see if he's making up ground now or not. Nothing changes on that lap. Reigns is going to have to hustle to reel in Scott Hampton. Joe Knott up with him now in the 48 car. Nine laps remain this time by for Scott Hansen. Oh boy, he clicked off about six tenths of a, well, no, he didn't. And scoring monitor changes on us again. Reigns picked up, well, maybe a couple of hundreds, but that's it. He's still eight tenths of a second behind. That's not gonna do it. He's gonna have to go a lot quicker than that. Well, lap traffic of Alec Pinsono may provide an opportunity for Tony Raines to close in on Scott Hansen. Through the corner here, Pinsono's 93 car to the inside. Hansen gets free, but Raines clear and on the gas pedal down the back stretch here, closes within six car lengths now. Raines now trying to close in. He's picked up a couple of tenths, maybe. Let's see what the clock say. Yes, he 
cut it in half. Tony Raines picks up four tenths of a second. He's going to need some more. Catching him is one thing, passing him is another. Watch this from the speed shot as they come blasting off of turn number four. Reigns lost a tenth on that lap. He's running the wheels off of that green nine car to catch the leader, Scott Hansen, in the closing circuits. And that might be the problem. He might have run the wheels off. He might have used up those tires. Top two drivers did take on right side tires last time, last time down pit lane. Carlson in the 87 car, he's in third. Seneca in the 84, he is listed in seven. So once again, Seneca saving his tires to the finish. However, he did lose some laps in the contest and is now seventh. As far as the points championship is concerned, so Whiskey, the points leader, runs in six. St. Amon is second in points. He is fourth. Third in the points is BB. He's 30th. Fourth in the points is Hanson. He's leading. Since his fifth in points, he's 10th. And Rage really closes in now. Three tenths of a second. Don't forget, a drought driver won the last weekend in Milwaukee. Can we get another one taken care of here today? He was winless in his last 31 starts. He might get his first in 97. The first in 31 starts today for Scott Hansen. Tony Raines is going to try to change that. He won earlier this year. And slower traffic, too. Harold Fair in front of him. That could come into play. Boy, two laps to go, and Raines has really put on a show for the fans here in Minnesota. Forget about the clocks now. Raines is all over it. And we've seen Tony Raines make most of his passes on the outside, Jim. So it doesn't matter where Hansen goes. Raines seems to be good all over the track today. Closing to the rear bumper to see the white flag from starter Roger Slack this time. One lap to go, the Minnesota State Fair. The Miller 300 is in the final laps. The lap car of Billy Turner in front of him. Scott Hansen and Kenny Schrader's number 52. Tony Raines trying to get to the outside as they come into turns three and four. Who's going to get it? Scott Hansen has ended his drought after 31 attempts. Scott Hansen has his first win in 1997, and the Kenny Schrader Racing Team is celebrating. Scott Hansen has done it. He is the winner of the Miller 300. We'll talk to our winner here at the Minnesota State Fair when we come back after these words. Don't go away. In 1989, Scott Hansen came to the Minnesota State Fair Speedway, started third and won in his rookie season here. 1997, he started third, and he wins again, Dave. Well, he's down in victory lane with his daughters, Amy and Jody. And Scott, we just want to know what you're thinking right now. You guys picked up, you moved down south, you kind of gave up everything you had up here, and you finally did it. I'll tell you, we didn't think this was ever going to come. A lot of controversy, you know, amongst this team and the move and everybody on it. but. Those guys dug all day and just kept going, and we changed this car a lot. And uh, we got in trouble up over there, and flat spotted the left front. We didn't get it off the last couple stops, and Tony was coming. Tony was coming. We talked earlier, whoever won had to buy some jet skis. He still makes more money with the Ford money, so he can buy them. Now, before today's race, Gary St. Amant got up this morning, and he thought to himself, it's a Scott Hansen day. Did he tell you that? He walked up right before the race. He says, you know, I hate this. I have these premonitions. You're going to win this race. I says, Gary, if I do, I'm going to give you a big kiss. So if he's around. Where's St. Amant? Where's St. Amant? <laughs> he's going to get one, I'll tell you what. I got to thank Kenny Schrader, everybody in Schrader Race, and, you know, having the, uh, the want to have us there and standing behind us and the whole deal. And I'll tell you, it was just a great deal, you know. We needed this. We needed this bad. And uh, tease our engines, Avco racing products, Penske shocks. First time I'm getting to say that stuff all year long. Goodyear tires were perfect. Kenny Ann, everybody there, thanks. Well, Scott Hansen obviously very satisfied with his victory today. As he should be. The AC Delco Challenge Series on TNN is brought to you in part by Wolverine, boots and shoes since 1883. Work like hell, feel like heaven. 
and your select GM Goodrich Service Plus dealers. The plus means better. Here's a look at the results from the Miller 300. Hanson the winner. Of course, he was in the mix of the points championship, so this will help him out. Tony Raines, one of the ringers, started dead last, finished second today. What a great run for him. Steve Carlson will strengthen his chase for the title of the Pat Shower Rookie of the Year as he comes home with a third. Gary St. Amant was second in the point standings. He finishes in front of point leader Kevin Sawinski, so he might pick up a couple. Sawinski in seventh is still finishing top 10 each and every each and every event, which is nearly impossible to overcome and maintain, but he's done it through 15 events. Bobby Gill in a one-race deal, a two-race deal, finishes eighth. And Sets Butch Miller. Butch Miller, the other ringer, or two of the four ringers we talked about, get top 10 finishes today. Mike Cofer, another great run for the driver of the Black & Decker car, the 79. Uh, last week a top 10 and this week he finishes 11th. Maybe things really turning around for them. Tim Sauter since Tuesday putting together a race team and Jerry Gunnerman's race car to a 14th place finish. Mike Garvey fighting a loose condition ended up 16th today. Ted Smokestead second last year, 18th this year. He pitted under green or under caution, excuse me, with a flat left front tire. Last year's winner Mike Miller can only do 19th in the rundown this afternoon. Brad Loney comes home 21st. Rick Beebe, he was third in the point standings. He is 30th today. Well, the Miller 300 is completed from one of the most picturesque half miles in the country. Two-way communications equipment for the AC Delco Challenge Series is provided by Racing Electronics to official communications of the American Speed Association. ASA Racing is produced for television by Silver Fox Sports, Charlotte, North Carolina. For Dave Burns and Jim Trado, I'm Ralph Shaheen. Congratulations to Scott Hansen and Kenny Schrader Racing, the winners of the Miller 300. So long.